I have to present the your you German, Yeah, in, 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 uh, in German, you would pr probably pronounce Igor Zaga, but Zaga. Or maybe you would French. Or maybe French, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Igor uh, comes from the <coughs> University of Ljubljana. Uh, he is a professor of rhetorics and argumentation. Um, and he is the head of the Center for Discourse Studies in Ljubljana. He's interested in pragmatics, speech and theory, critical discourse analysis, and philosophy of language and argumentation. Thank you. Okay, this paper, this presentation is not about corpora, as you can see, it's about the critical discourse analysis, and more, more precisely about the uh, so called discourse historical approach. And I hope people will agree that it's one of the major branches of critical discourse analysis. <laughs> okay, so let's have a short look at the uh, goals of the CDA or DHA one. Text or discourse elements critique aims to discover inconsistencies, self contradictions, paradoxes, and dilemmas in the text and field of discourse internal structures. Two, the social diagnostic critique is concerned with the demystifying exposure of the possibly persuasive <coughs> or manipulative character of discursive practices. Three, prognostic critique contributes to the transformation of communication. Dixit, Mantova. And what are their approaches? <coughs> CDA, she says, is not concerned with evaluating what is right and wrong. CDA should try to make choices at each point in the research itself, and please pay attention to that, should make these choices transparent. It should also justify theoretically why certain interpretations of these present events seem more valid than the others. One of the methodical ways of, for critical discourse analysis to minimize the risk of being biased is to follow the principle of triangulation. That's one of the most salient distinguishing features of is its endeavor to work with different approaches, not methodically, and on the basis of a variety of empirical data as a paper of information. And one of the approaches DHA is using in implementing the principle of triangulation is the use of argumentation, more precisely, topoi emphasis. So in this presentation, I'll be just concerned with its uh, the token analysis may become some other time. And with the following question How and in what way are topo used in the DHA as one of the most influential schools of CDA? Because other approaches like Berkler, Van Leuven, or Kreis do not use topo at all. Does such a use of argumentation, in this case topo and analysis, actually minimize the risk of being biased and consequentially? No such a use of topo in fact implement the principle of true regulation. And here is well, the first definition of what topo are. Topo or are can be described as part of argumentation, which belong to the obligatory, either explicit or informal premises. They are the contact-related words of inclusion rules, which connect, please pay attention to that as well, which connect the argument to argument with the conclusion of the claim. As such, they justify the transition of the argument to arguments to the conclusion. By the way, this definition is taken from now the King Partners book, Altax Lobby, published in 1922. Literally. We can find the very same definition, almost on copy paste, there is a scene in the discursive construction of national identity. <coughs> in the discourse and discrimination, which is a kind of a well, I see it as a Bible of DHA in the discourse of politics in action, and I could go on and on and on. And on. But on the other side, in addition to the previous definition, John Richardson also talks of Topoi as reservoirs of generalized key ideas from the specific statements of arguments being generated. Now, one would wonder about the purpose and the, well, let's say, ontological status of the two definitions. Are topoi content-related words, 
or are they just generalized key ideas? Because words are much more than just key ideas. They demand much more to be able to secure the transition from an argument to conclusion than just the generalized ideas. Namely, they demand a certain structure or mechanism in the form of an instruction or a rule. In the chapter, the discourse historical approach, we read that the analysis of critical content related argument schemes can be carried out against the background of the list of term parties though incomplete and not always determinative, as given in the following table. And there's a table and the list of term particles. Usefulness, uselessness, definition, danger, threat, humanitarianism, justice, responsibility, burdening, finances, reality, numbers, law, and right, history, culture, and views. With no explanation or justification. Or justification. Sorry. Now, in Richardson, we can find the exactly same list of topology, but this time they are characterized as the most common topology which are used when writing or talking about others, specifically about migrants. In the discourse of politics and action published in 2009, we get yet another list of the most common topology which are used when negotiating specific agenda meetings or trying to convince an audience of interests, visions, or positions. <clears throat> and those are purpose of burdening, reality, numbers, history, authority, trend, definition, justice, and urgency. But the most puzzling list of Tolkien could be found in Krzyzanowski's work on Poland and Europe. So in his article, we get the list of detail identified in the respective corpora, namely the national European one. <clears throat> Those would be the topo from the national groups. Topos of national unities, of the national growth, national history, East and West, past and future, modernizations of course, EU as national necessity, as a national past. Topos of the organic work, that's an interesting one. Topos of Polish pragmatism and Eurorealism. And in the arguments, topos of diversity in Europe. European history and heritage, European values, European unity, Europe of various speeds, core and periphery, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, how these topoi were identified and what makes the detail for it is not explained. So, is there another list that Helen took the identify? If so, it must be very different from the list we have seen a few moments ago. So, maybe there are several different lists. If so, who constructs them? When, where, especially for what purposes, and how? Is there a kind of a grid, conceptual or in some other way, epistemological or methodological, that helps us or helps them to do that? If so, where can we find this grid? How was it conceptually constructed? And if there is no such grid, how do we get all these different lists of turmoil? By chemistry, intuition, rule of thumb, are they universal? Just general, or maybe a very contingent. Now, judging from the lists we have just seen, there are no rules or criteria. <clears throat> the only methodological precept seems to be anything goes. That's not in fire on this list. So, if so, why do we need pre evaluation? And what happened to the principles indicated in the DHA should try to make choices? at each point in the research itself, and should make these choices transparent. Now, we have seen identical and similar bundles of topoi for different purposes or occasions. We have seen different bundles of topoi for identical and similar <coughs> purposes or occasions. We have seen different bundles of topoi for different occasions. And we have seen pretty exotic bundles of topoi for pretty particular and singular purposes. Now, this leads us to a key question. Can anything be or become a topos, at least within the DHJ? And consequently, what actually historically is a topos? Where does it come from? Why was the concept of topos constructed? It all depends on what purpose. But before we try to answer this question or these questions, now let us have a look at how the previously mentioned lists of topoi are actually used in the DHJ. In this course of discrimination, 
as well as in the East Coast historic collaboration and in others, we can find, among others again, the following identical definition of the term loss of advantage. Now, the loss of advantage is, for this can be paraphrased by means of the following condition. <coughs> if an action under a specific relevant point of view would be useful, then one should perform it. And then we have the example. In a decision of the Viennese Minister of Authorities, the refusal of residents permit is sent out as follows. Because of the private and family situation of the claimant, the refusal of the application of the issue represents quite an intrusion in her private and family life. The public interest, which is against the residence permit, is to be valued more strongly than the contrast of the private and family interest of the claimant. Thus, it had to be decided according to the judgment. And that is all. If it is, he's supposed to connect an argument between two judges, all the relevant legitimate judges claim. Now, one would expect that at least a minimal reconstruction would follow. Namely, what is the argument in the court of law? What is the conclusion in the court of law? How is the above mentioned purpose connecting the two? And what is the argumentative analysis of the court of law? Unfortunately, all these elements are missing. The definition and reported fragment are all the reads of the expected argumentative analysis. Now, this is actually the basic pattern <coughs> excuse me, of functioning for most of these DHA words. At the beginning, there will be a list of topoi and a short description for each of them. First, the additional paraphrase of the typical topos will be followed by a short discourse fragment in the spirit of distinction and paraphrase but without any explicit reconstruction of possible arguments, conclusions, or term point connecting the two which was a framework. And after the short theoretical or theoretical introduction, different term points will just be referred to by names throughout the book, as if everything has already been explained in these few introductory pages. Therefore, okay, what really is a voice? Methodological, epistemological, and historical. Okay, the Aristotelian terms, which literally means the place of location, is an argumentative scheme which enables a repetition of a tradition to construe an argument through the conclusion. Most of the Aristotelian terms are general instructions, allowing the conclusion of a certain form, not content. To be derived from premises of a certain form, not content, which is obviously not obvious. Why? Because you can use the same forms on different contents, right? Okay, first we will have problems. That is, what is the state? What is being discussed? And those are explained by propositions. Every proposition will consist of a subject and a predicate, a lot of the subject, and these predicates usually refer to as predicables. Literature in Aristotle are of four kinds definition, genus, property, and accident. Definition is a phrase indicating the essence of something, property is something which does not show the essence of a thing but belongs to it alone and is predicated convertibly of it. Genus is that which is predicted in the category of essence of several things which refer to time, and accident is that which is none of these things but still belongs to the thing. These are the theoretical and methodological preliminaries that give us the topoi, not yet the topoi themselves. To be able to select subject appropriate claims, we need order or tools in English. And these again are four the provision of propositions, the ability to distinguish in how many senses a particular expression is used, the discovery of differences, and the investigation of similarities. Now, strictly speaking, again, we are not yet dealing with Tsongkhwa here. <coughs> Though very often, an in interpretation of the four ordinary tools, as well as the four predicates, are considered and used to the Tsongkhwa. Okay, there are two ways in which Aristotle then frames Tsongkhwa in his topics. Rhetoric is quite good. <coughs> they would consist of an instruction, and on the basis of this instruction, a rule of the four. Like one, Instruction, check whether C is D, and then the rule, rule follows if C is D, then B would be A. And then 
we can get the real topos right under A. If an action Y is desirable in relation to an object X, the contrary action Y prime should be disapproved of in relation to the same object X. And when we apply this rule to a concrete subject matter, we get something like if it is desirable to act in favor of one's friends, it should be disapproved of to act against one's friends. And this could be used as a general phrase, excuse me, in the antigone of a syllogism. Okay, in Cicero's list, a few centuries later, uh, on the other hand, topos or lotzi are considered to be a list of concepts that may trigger an associative process rather than a collection of implicit rules and precepts for implicit rules as the topoi, Aristotle, and Stoics are. So in other words, Cicero slots in mostly function as subject matter indicators or Lotzi communis. <coughs> Alocus communis is a ready-made argument. It does not guide the construction of an argument, but it can be transferable to several similar cases and has the main function of putting the audience in a favorable frame of mind, which is more close to what the HA is actually doing. But, in fact, it seems that the DHA is not using the Aristotelian or Ciceronian supply, but the so called literary supply, conceptualized by Aristotle and Kutzis in his Europäische Literatur in Lateinische Mittelalter. Now, what is a literary surplus? In a nutshell, already oral histories passed down from pre historic societies containing different aspects, characters, and settings, which appear again and again in stories from ancient civilizations, religious texts, arts, and even more modern stories. So this, yeah, I will have finished in a moment. <coughs> so this recurrent and repetitive motives, light motives, would be then labeled literary tabloid. And, that's his definition, they are intellectual things suitable for development and modification of the orator's pressure. That is, as the order sees them fit. Okay, these topoi have absolutely nothing to do with connecting arguments and conclusions. But are literally by examples. And to be absolutely clear, there is absolutely nothing wrong with using literary topoi. But their purpose is simply not to connect with possible arguments and possible conclusions. And we should be able to so, we can go back to the initial questions and start with Answer them. Does such a use of argumentative features in this sense of way actually minimize the risk of being biased? I would say no. And consequentially, does such a use of the in fact implement the principle of triangulation? Not at all. Thank you. would like to know more about it, there is a rather extensive paper over there. That was, yeah, that had to be done in 15 minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? I totally agree with what I said. Well, it's a kind of, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. In, 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 in the first paper, I gave a few examples how the reconstruction should be done, like at least uh, as a basic uh, syllogism or according to the Turin scheme. And I was told that at the last Kadath conference, uh, Vodak actually adopted, <laughs> adopted oh. the solution and proposed that the reconstruction should be done in this way, not mentioning either Turin. Uh, or myself. What do you think? Uh, uh, could we establish contemporary politics, and how could we distinguish that to the uh, organ? 
topics. What do you mean by contemporary topics? What of Popeye creating contemporary thinking? I mean, using those uh, organic proposals? Yeah. Yeah, yes. sure. E even using those four. And why it doesn't exist? You should ask me about that. <laughs> I mean, my I guess would be... Absolutely my, yeah, yeah, my guess would be it's it's very easy to use yes. to boil like yeah. this, saying, okay, that's it. So, but reconstructing the process of organization is much more difficult. Right now, we are hungry for topics now. You mean the society at large? And, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Peter, thank you for this very interesting thank you. paper. Uh, we will have some. Yeah. yeah, we are having a half hour now, a break of. No, no, no. 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 Last time, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we can be back in. So uh, the, in the afternoon, we have one last talk of this panel. It's Anna Matusek, I think. And uh, 